opportunity for people of our age. I'm a retired doctor and uh, I now have a new life. So uh, thank you for having me. Thank you. Uh, good morning, I'm uh, Steve Sturps. I used to belong about 10 years ago when the meetings were virtual. Somewhere along the line between the pandemic and moving, I was misplaced. It's good to be back and uh, nice to see some familiar people. Sounds like you've got competition for your audio. It's oh. coming from your pocket? No. No? Oh, yeah, I do. Yeah, so, yeah. 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 Come on. Good morning. My name is uh, Jack Schechner. I'm uh, living in this area six years from Long Island. And actually, I know Bob Levine for over 50 years. I haven't seen him in a long time. Uh, but uh, it's a pleasure to be here and uh, join you guys for a monthly uh, breakfast. And uh, a lot of my friends from Montebello are now uh, members of this uh, great organization. And uh, I know I will benefit from this for many years to come. Yeah, my name is... Close to the mic. Yeah, my name is Mel Epstein. Very famous name, Epstein. I'm sure you're familiar with it somewhere. Uh, I've lived in this area now for about uh, 10, 15 years and just love it here. I, I owned a saloon for 20 years, but I'm retired 29 years. And I, I do love my retirement, really. And joining this is one of my desires, really. I'm sure it'll work out well. Uh, by the way, I'm 91 years old. My name is Alan Brenner. Um, I'm living here many years and uh, met Steve Bar saw, saw Steve Barsky the other day. He asked me to stop by, and I'm glad I did. Uh, you're too tall. <laughs> I'll repeat again. My name is Alan Brenner. Uh, I met. I saw Steve Barsky the other day. I've known him for many years. He asked me to stop by. Um, I'm glad I did, and. Uh, I will be back. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Good morning. My name is David Steinberg. I was here last month as the speaker, and I was just told to walk up to the the podium and introduce myself, and I don't know what else I can say right now, other than good morning, and I trust we're all going to have a really nice time. Thank you. I, I like that you're fully decked out. I'm, I'm fully decked out, by the way. Thank you very much for that. Appreciate it. <laughs> Wonderful. Man, I think that's the most new members we've had in a month in a while. Uh, that's terrific. Would one of the new members like to lead us in the mozi? Everybody will join in, you're not on your own. Do we have a volunteer? If not, we're just going to have to do it all together. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Mela Olam Amotzi Lechem Min Haaretz. If there are any guys who need a little bit extra time, let them go up first. Take a minute. Start start at the buffet. If if you need a little extra time, go. Don't feel rushed. After, after you've had a head start, then everybody else will join you. A couple of announcements. What do you can't hear? Can you hear now? Go. Oh, oh, it's everybody else. You're listening to everybody else. Okay, I'm sure they're, they've got very important things to say. If anybody has an announcement, going around. Something's going around. Okay, fabulous. Rob went, ar went around to remind anybody if you're a new member, please fill out your new member application form. It gets us all of your information. We'll know how to contact you. Also, if you've got food or book donations that you'd like to bring in every meeting, we collect kosher food that goes to the food bank. We do a book exchange here. Any extra books, 
go out to the lobby and then they're sold for the benefit of the JCC. Rich has a quick announcement too. Yes, um, guys, one, come over here. Um, one of the backbones of our breakfast, and I really mean the backbone of our breakfast, the guy who sets up the tables, more importantly, makes the coffee, makes more coffee, anything we want, he does. Juan is leaving us, and uh, hopefully for good, good and better things, of course, we wish him well, and I just want to give him a great thanks for helping us out all this time, please. And there's a little bit of our appreciation and good help. Thank okay. you. Appreciate Thank it. you. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Juan. Okay. I don't. Oh, yeah. Come on up. <laughs> All I got was the picnic in the law breakfast. So. <laughs> Can I have your attention, please? Hello. Hi. Hi, I'm Mike Perloff, former president. By the by, we have a lot of new people here. And this is quite an interesting organization. Picture this. Every past president, and we've been together for about 31, 32 years now, still comes to meetings if they're in the, if they're in the country. <laughs> but if you'll notice up here, there's a slide presentation of some of the things we did this year, the tail end of the pandemic. You'll notice up here, this is the, this is when we placed the flags for 9-11. All right, how many people participated in placing the flags? Well done, gentlemen, well done. Some people did it, taking them down, and oh, it's going to the next one. They're, they're only up here for five, six, seven seconds each. This is collecting Hanukkah cards for U.S. troops. And we had done it since the first Gulf War. Nelson Mellitz, Nelson, would you stand, please? He's <laughs> Nelson has been a member since the very beginning. And he's currently the national commander of the Jewish war veterans. And something, yep. And back for the first Gulf War, came up with an idea of sending of um, Hanukkah cards to troops overseas, the Jewish troops, and it has made a big difference. And we've done it, as I said, the first time we did it, the JCC was on Route 70. That's a long time ago, all right? What we need, and Nelson will speak about it for a moment, or do you want me to just mention it? Okay, we need Hanukkah cards. So I know many people, including myself, if we go through our closets, we have boxes of Hanukkah cards we haven't used in decades. I'm sorry, real quick, more coffee has arrived. <laughs> if you have some Hanukkah cards, bring them to the next meeting. If you want to fill out some Hanukkah cards, some of them will go to Israeli troops. We have contacts to the IDF. Some of them will also go to U.S. troops all over the world. We have contacts through the different chaplain organizations. You also see here that what, something, the constructing a sukkah. Now you don't have to be a starka. You don't have to be an athlete. You don't have to be half your age. Take a look at the pictures. This is a bunch of us some years ago getting ready to put together the sukkah right out front, okay? Can I have your attention please? Now, the thing to keep in mind is that we have to do it the day after Rosh uh, Yom Kippur. The day after Yom Kippur, which is going to be Thursday, October the 6th. Much better. All right? And this keeps recycling. You'll see something about the law breakfast. Oh. On your table, I have to back up, on your table, you've got a sign-up sheet to come help put together the sukkah. Look, everybody does a tiny little thing so nobody gets worn out. Of course, we got one guy who needs a life, uh, we're gonna have to tie him down so he doesn't fall off the ladder again, Bob. And <laughs> hey, wait, I saw you hanging on the bar two years ago. I know, I was doing push-ups and sit-ups and chin-ups, yeah. chin-ups. Anyway, the... Yeah, they, they 
there's many opportunities for people to volunteer, and uh, I suggest that you do this. Try it out. On October 6th, sign up that you're going to come and help at 10 o'clock in the morning, right out front. Uh, as far as the Hanukkah cards, we also try to encourage Hanukkah cards to come from the Hebrew schools. That works out nicely. And we get, actually we do get feedback. And we've done other things, for instance, when we had uh, troops in Afghanistan and Baghdad, Iraq, we had, uh, a, they had a need to be able to get things for the High Holy Days. We got them chauffeurs and we sent them from the men's club. We got them prayer books that they didn't have at the time. This is your men's club doing this. And moving forward, this is the kind of thing that we can all participate in. I know quite a few people, and I've heard it just within the last month or two, told me they're looking for things to do. This is a vehicle for you being able to give back to the community and find another way to enrich your own lives by helping enrich others. So while we're standing here, while you're sitting and watching, before the program starts, take a look up here and see some of the things that we've done in the past and you can help do in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mike. Oh. Ron, come on up. Mike stole my my all my thunder. I was supposed I was supposed to be talking about that, but so when you look at the slides, you'll notice that he's in a lot of the pictures. He's a, Mike's in a lot of the pictures, and that's no accident. I just want I just want testing testing. Okay, um, I just want to say about building sukkah. Um, but somebody asked me in passing. Someone asked me. Someone asked me in passing. Oh, I don't know how to build a sukkah. You don't know how to have to know how to build a sukkah. sukkah. There'll be about a dozen guys. I know myself. I've done it like three times, and I'm holding something so someone can attach it. We just need, in many cases, just bodies to help with moving stuff and holding stuff. So you don't you don't need to have an engineering degree. Okay, so we just need volunteers. Not only, and it wasn't mentioned, when's the sukkah coming down? Uh, usually about a week later. Yeah, so we'll, we'll need people for that as well. So join us, it's fun, a lot of camaraderie, and we're doing the JCC a great service. Thank you, Ron. And, and yes, that's a good point. If you can't make it for the erection of the sukkah, then come to help tear it down because we need to do it in a nice orderly fashion so that we have a sukkah for the next year to put back up. Nelson, if you have a second. Mike already talked about Hanukkah cards, bringing them in, but Nelson, I think, will be talking about our, the mission to Israel. Thank you, Phil. And good morning, everybody. It's really a pleasure to be here and hear about all the things that this community club does. There's no other men's club or any organization that I'm aware of that does so many things for our community. And I'm really, it's a privilege to be a member. What I wanted to talk about is uh, supporting Israel and the mission to Israel. As a policy, the, the South Jersey Men's Club supports Israel. And you know that from all the activities we get involved in. What's happening in, is coming up next year is the 75th anniversary of Israel's existence. That's ever since I've been alive, Israel's been there. Doesn't mean it's going to be there forever. We know all the arguments, everything that's happening against Israel. We know the anti-Semitism. We know all the people, some Jewish, that are fighting against the existence of Israel. What the Jewish War of Veterans is doing is inviting people to participate in the mission to Israel. You can see on most of your tables, if it's not on your table, there's flyers that are out in the front which says the 33rd Allied Mission to Israel, it's April 20th to 30th. You do not have to be a veteran. You do not have to be a member of the JWV, but this is really a joint effort in, in fighting our community, the South Jersey Men's Club and non-Jewish people. And we are sponsoring, the Jew Jewish War Veterans is sponsoring at least 10 non-Jewish people in prominent positions throughout the United States to go to Israel for free with their spouses. But you, I invite you to participate with us. It's a fantastic trip. 
I was on it before the pandemic. This is even better than then. Plus, what we've added to the trip is Volunteers for Israel. Mike and myself made a presentation on Volunteers for Israel. So we're, we're going to be working on a military base, anybody that's physically capable of doing it, the week before the mission to Israel. You work there, you let a reservist, an active duty IDF troop, be with their family or do something else extremely important. But you could volunteer to go on that trip. I have flyers for that too. That is on April 16th to 19th, the mission to Israel. We're going to meet up with them if you're on the Volunteers for Israel base on April 20th, and that goes through April 30th. It's a great trip. Don't worry about your disabilities on the mission to Israel. We've already gotten people to sign up that have walkers, primarily use uh, wheelchairs, and we will make sure that you're comfortable with your caretaker. So, um, and we've added to the trip also for anybody that wants to, for an extra cost, of course, a trip to Egypt, four day trip to Egypt. But primarily what I'm interested in is getting as many South Jersey members to actually participate in the mission to Israel. It's an opportunity for us to show the support for Israel. Thank you, thank you, Phil. Thank you, Nelson. Okay, you just told me to, to remind people of something and I forgot already. The video library. Dave, everything's on YouTube. All of our, our past meetings are videoed by Dr. Dave. We've got them up on YouTube. Are there links on the website? Yes, links on the, uh, the South Jersey Men's Club website that will take you to those uh, video recordings available on YouTube. You can go back and either watch or re-watch any speaker that we've had for the past many years, I would say. I don't know how, how far back they go exactly. So we've got the sukkah, Nelson. One more thing, we have a new batch of cards available, South Jersey Men's Club cards. If you'd like to send one, talk to Len, you know, just let him know where you'd like it sent. They are, there's one up here if you want to come and check it out. Really nice, the new cards, quite heavy card stock. But we've got a special today. If you want to take cards home with you, they're blank on the inside and on the, on the front, they've got someone putting a message into the wall, the Western wall. On the back it says, the term mitzvah is often translated as a commandment. It can refer to any Jewish religious obligation or more generally to any good deed. One of the 613 mitzvot of the Jewish religion is to give charity according to one's mean. And that's from Deuteronomy 15.11. Tzedakah is the Hebrew word for acts that we call charity in English and it's derived from the Hebrew root sade dalit kof meaning righteousness, justice, and fairness. A, gener a generous con contribution has been made in your honor to the South Jersey Men's Club. So these contribution cards, you fill them out for any occasion that you'd like. You send them to your friends, your relatives. It can be for a wedding, an anniversary, a birthday, uh, any mitzvah, it can be a condolence card. They're, they're blank, completely appropriate. If you wanna buy them one at a time, we're asking for a $10 contribution. If you want today, special today only for you, we're doing three for 25 or seven for 50. So quite a deal. I've got stamps here, I've got cards. We'll set you up with a little package. Come and see me before you leave. Walk out with a few cards, you'll have them on hand the next time you need a card for an occasion. Stan? I just want to say, if there's anybody here who hasn't paid their dues and they want to pay it today, this would be great to, to get it now. Uh, if you have uh, dues you want to pay today, just bring it up to me and uh, we'll take care of it. Thank you. Pay your dues first and then with the leftover money, buy a couple of cards. Okay, now for our featured speaker, Kirk Bomsey, if you'd like to come up. I know he wants to introduce himself. So uh, thank you very much for thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, did somebody have a remote mic? I usually like to walk around. Uh, 
I mean, I, I, I guess I can. There you go. Obviously, the hours are forward and backwards. Yeah. Okay. Let me just check this for one minute. Okay, so I always find it easier to introduce myself. Um, since I'm talking about... They're going to turn these lights off so that okay. we can see your presentation. Yeah. yeah, I think you need all the lights out. I think you also need that door closed, uh, if you could. I usually don't like to apologize for some things, but there are some of the uh, pictures that you'll see I had to get off the uh, internet and they, I can only get them rather small, so it's a combination using your imagination. Uh, but speaking of South Philly, uh, speaking of uh, Philadelphia, uh, just so you know, uh, I'm sort of a very proud, uh, having grown up in South Philadelphia, and uh, it's just still a good part of me. I, uh, my profession, my, I, I've re basically had two have two professions. One is my, uh, the bread and butter one was, uh, I was a pediatric dentist in Cherry Hill. And the second one was photography, which is what I'm more involved in now. Is there a light that's on the, uh, that's all right. Uh, I'll, I'll remember, never mind. I remember, basically remember what's on here. So, uh, anyway, so in photography, I, I basically had two interests. One was sort of freelance photojournalism, and the other one uh, was fine arts. How I came to what I'm presenting today had to do with uh, Rabbi David, we were going on a trip to Cuba, and he asked me if I would document the trip and then present it to the congregation. And I found that uh, I had a lot of fun with it, and I decided that uh, I would do that. Going back a little bit, uh, my first, uh, I got into large-scale photography, photojournalism, uh, I was stationed with the 101st Airborne and the head of the air wing asked me, he was having a full division review on his retirement. And that sort of uh, got me started on that area. Over the years, I, uh, I've been, I was a volunteer photographer for Coleman Race for the Cure for at least 15 years. Uh, some of these things I backed into. Uh, I, I was going to the Philadelphia Sports Writers dinners that was held here, and a friend of mine was uh, Larry Litwin, who was a secretary, and one day he says, you know, the photographer didn't show up, will you do it? And so I did that for quite a number of years. I've also done uh, work for the Cherry Hill News, and that's basically my photographic background. Uh, the series of, photo of lectures that I have was basically starting with the Cuba, and then my wife and I, Natalie, that have traveled, and wherever we go, I always visit all the Jewish sites and photograph everything I can and try to meet with the people that are in the Jewish community. Uh, actually, the Philadelphia one is the last one is the latest one that I've done. So uh, we'll start with that. The Jewish community in Philadelphia actually goes back to this area, goes back to the William Penn era. There were just a few families, very unorganized, but they came here because of the religious freedom that was uh, offered to them. And so this discuss about, discusses about that uh, first group that came here. 
And this, of course, is one of the main things that why the Jews settled in the, in the United States and in Philadelphia, which was one of the major cities that the Jews from Eastern Europe especially came from. The first Jews that came here were from Germany. And they were the ones that, for instance, formed the Road of Sholem and Knesset Israel. And the Liberty Bell, as you know, has inscribed uh, with proclaim liberty throughout the land. And so biblically, the Jewish people are all over the place. And from Leviticus, we move to the Revolutionary War and Haim Solomon was one of the prominent financiers of this Revolutionary War. He helped in, and including especially when they were in trouble in uh, Valley Forge. You can see that this country has honored him. Uh, the interesting thing is on this uh, statue of Haim Salman, who was primarily in Philadelphia, the statue is actually in Chicago. There is no statue of Haim Salman in Philadelphia, even though he is buried here. This is a fellow by the name of Jonas Phillips, and he was also a prominent financier of uh, the Revolutionary Army. This is Rabbi Cantor Satius, who was the rabbi from Sharath, Israel in New York City. I don't know if any people are here from New York that are familiar with that synagogue. It is one of the oldest synagogues. It was formed by the Portuguese Jews. But uh, when uh, the British had conquered New York, he decided that he and whatever followers that would uh, go with him came to Philadelphia and he came to Mikveh, Israel. This is Rebecca Gratz, who was very instrumental in Jewish education. She formed some of the first schools. She formed some of the charities that helped those immigrants that came at that time. This is Emma Lazarus. And uh, I'm sure you all know that she's the one that wrote what was on the Statue of Liberty. And again, all these people uh, point out that they have connections with Philadelphia. This is Uriah, Commodore Uriah Levy, one of the first officers in the US Navy. His contributions to the Navy were many, but probably one of the most important one was that he uh, abolished uh, corporal punishment in the US Navy. Was well, wasn't very popular about it, but still, he did get to the rank of Commodore, which at that time was extremely high. There's another interesting aspect. Uh, actually, this is, uh, I don't know if any of you have been to the Naval Academy, but the chapel area is named uh, for Commodore Levy. And you can see his name there. This is Monticello. And uh, after Jefferson passed away, Monticello uh, got into terrible disrepair. And Uri Uriah Levy bought Monticello and actually financed the renovation of it. This is an interesting character from Philadelphia. His name is Carvalho, Portuguese background. He was a photographer. And 
he went with John Fremont when he, Fremont was given the commission to explore California. Uh, he had a studio in Philadelphia. At that time, all the photographs were basically these gigantic uh, glass plates. And tragically, there was a fire in the studio and almost all of them were destroyed. This is Rabbi Lesser, who was basically came from New Orleans, and he also came to Mikveh Israel, but he was interested in a lot of the reforms that basically what is now the conservative movement he was involved in. This is a Rabbi Franks, who was the chaplain in the Union Army. Each of these individuals, there are long stories about them, and certainly uh, I'm just trying to give an overview of it, and uh, hopefully some of you will remember the names and look up what they did. This had to do with, there was a sailor, Jewish sailor, pronounced his Judaism that was in the first submarine corps in the uh, US Navy. This is actually uh, from the uh, museum in Philadelphia, and it had to do with one of the physicians uh, from the Union Army, who then came to, then was in Philadelphia. This is a mural from, uh, that was first at Temple University's, uh, the Baptist Temple, some of you go back that far. And they had the chaplain, chapel of the four chaplains. And the story there was that there was a troop ship going uh, across the Atlantic, and it was torpedoed. And the four chaplains gave up their life jackets to soldiers that did not have any. And together they prayed and they uh, went down with the ship. Another one of the first, as, you, as many of you know, that uh, Jewish physicians could not get on staffs of any of the hospitals in the, this is in, uh, time in here is 1865. But prior to that, you couldn't get it. So the Jews, as we're always resourceful, we just decided that, uh, or they decided, I wasn't part of that. Uh, they decided that uh, they would just form their own uh, hospital. This was called the Jewish Hospital. It's what Einstein Medical Center is now, on the same location. Uh, they also formed the first nursing school where, again, Jewish women were able to study and be able to be part of it where before they were discriminated against. This is the immigration center at Fronton, Washington. And very few people, and uh, I, I, as an aside, I, I have a beef with the American the Jewish American Museum, that they don't play up this at all. But this immigration center was uh, from the late 1800s to 1924. And it was through here that the mass migration of the Jews escaping the pogroms in the 1880s and then in the early 1900s, they actually came through Philadelphia, not through Ellis Island. So there were really hundreds of thousands that came through here. And I, I just find this is one of the more undocumented pieces of Jewish history. Where, where's the location? Front in Washington. Okay. There is a plaque there, but nothing else. 
So, so it is noted, okay, demolished in 1915. Was, let's say 1870s it was started. So actually my mother-in-law came through this particular one and all of her friends that came, she was actually from outside Kiev. So this segues me into talking a little bit about South Philadelphia because the, the process was that you, most of these Jews that came from Eastern Europe were impoverished. So you came here, you got off the boat, you had no money, so the first thing you had to do was find some place to sleep, and so you were in South Philadelphia, and you found a place in South Philadelphia, and then future generations stayed there, and South Philadelphia was a thriving Jewish community until the 1960s when everybody started, uh, were more affluent, and they went to the suburbs of Northeast Philadelphia, uh, to Overbrook, to West Oak Lane. This is a great book by, uh, again, I'm just trying to show some things. Uh, I don't know how many of you know famous delicatessen. Uh, at one time, uh, famous delicatessen the politics of Philadelphia were done in the back room. And it was at Rendell and uh, a number of his uh, aides. They would actually be sitting in a back room corner at Famous and deciding how the politics of Philadelphia is gonna go. And eventually the state. And so it, uh, I used to drive from Cherry Hill to come down to here. Synagogues, again, Mikveh Israel, having been one of the first, and still there, it's right near, it's worth going over there. It is right near the, uh, it's on Fifth Street, just north of Market. This is a mo monument in the, on the side of the synagogue to, Yoni Netanyahu, does anybody know who that is? Anybody doesn't know who that is? The brother of Bibi. What's that? The brother of Bibi. Brother of Bibi, the, tragically the only one killed in the Entebbe raid. But the monument is here. Uh, you know, uh, Bibi and uh, Yonatan, uh, grew up in the uh, Cheltenham area while their father was uh, on a mission here. Sorry. So this I show at one time in South Philadelphia, there were 196 synagogues. So, for those who don't know it, if you come over from a small shtetl in Eastern, in Russia, Poland, you're not gonna go worship in somebody else's shtetl synagogue. And almost all of them were similar to this. It was a house that was renovated uh, to be and uh, basically South Philadelphia, I think, for, except for one exception, did not have uh, a large size synagogue. They were also, uh, those of you that know some Yiddish, it was a shtibel, and, and you just made a synagogue in there. But uh, that was the history. This I point, uh, for those of you, uh, I don't know how many are here from South Philly, but, uh, no hands, how about that? Anyway, this is uh, one of those little synagogues and this is the one where I was bar mitzvah. This is a little bit more monumental. This is uh, Beth Shalom up in uh, 
off of 611. Uh, this is the, in the middle, that's the architect, is Frank Lloyd Wright. So that there, it is architecturally a remarkable landmark. Lewis Kahn is from Philadelphia, one of the preeminent architects. More of his stuff is around the world than this is in Pakistan, Bangladesh. And uh, he taught at the University of Pennsylvania. The Philadelphia Museum of Art. Of course, a lot of paintings inside are by Jewish artists. I just decided to show, this is by uh, uh, Jacob Epstein. I'm sorry. This is Jack Lipschitz, who's the other. So the renovation of the art museum that's been going on for the last few years, there's nothing remarkable about it, but the whole interior, almost the whole interior has been redone. And the architect is Frank Gehry. And Frank Gehry can't get from his name, but is Jewish. So he did some of the most remarkable structures in the world. Uh, my favorite is the Guggenheim in Bilbao, Spain, which is just a remarkable thing. He did the uh, music hall in Los Angeles, a number of other things, but he's worked in Philadelphia for quite some time. This is just one of his things that he wrote about his enjoying being in Philadelphia and working on the Art Institute. This is the Holocaust Memorial on uh, the Parkway. The artist is a world famous artist by the name of Natan Rappaport. And those of you that have been to Yad Vashem, the, uh, the Ghetto Fighters sculpture that's there, and of course is in Warsaw, uh, is his. And this is the stone. And on the avenue which has all the flags, we have the Israeli flag. Now, the entrepreneurs in Philadelphia, this is Gimbel Brothers. That no longer exists. But this is Lit Brothers. And that's been kept up because it's protected under national preservation because of the uniqueness of its architecture. And Lit Brothers was the first that really uh, developed merchandising as we know it now. I had to throw this in. This is the first horn and hard art that started in Philadelphia. There was recently, Mel Brooks did a uh, program called The Automat and talked about uh, uh, the two of them sp split after a while in the sense that one stayed with Philadelphia and the other one went to New York. But I think for the, uh, I still hear stories about, from the Jewish community, that this is one of the favorite places, as with many Philadelphians, that this is where they would go Sunday uh, if you went out to eat. This is the Rodin Museum. And the Rodin Museum was financed by a fellow by the name of Massbaum sort of wondering if I'm sort of outdating most of the people here. But there was a mass-bound theater in Philadelphia on Chestnut Street. 
But he was a entrepreneur, and he had he collected uh, Rodin sculptures, and then he decided that he would build a donate to the city and build a, a housing for his sculptures. Sigmund Lubin was from Philadelphia. He was one of the very early pioneers in the film industry. As you know, for most part, the film industry started on the East Coast, in New York, Long Island, but also in Philadelphia. And he did a number of technical things. Uh, this is one of the early, imagine this in your living room. And here's the National Museum of American Jewish History. Uh, Natalie and I were, uh, we've been charter members of this. And this was a statue that was at the centennial that they then brought and had to do with liberty also. Uh, at the opening, the inauguration of the museum, we were invited to uh, this, this was one of the events, and it was then Vice President Biden who gave the major s speech. So here we have three Jewish politicians. You recognize uh, uh, Rendell on the left, Specter on the right, and the senator from, longtime senator from New Jersey, Lautenberg. Uh, Rendell and Lynn Abraham, who for a long time was the district attorney in the city of Philadelphia. Uh, one picture I left out, I do have to, to mention it. The balloons that you see in the back, that's the Komen race. It was held on the, on the parkway on Mother's Day. I don't know how many of your wives or daughters or daughter-in-laws have participated in that. But I unfortunately left out because the woman who had really was the person that really ran that whole Komen race for the cure, almost by herself, but she had a good staff. And I don't have a picture here, but I want to mention her name because there's somebody here that his wife is related to the husband, and her name was, is Elaine Grobman. So in philanthropy, uh, I think she's one of the stalwarts in present day uh, Philadelphia. Sidney Kimmel, uh, as you, you know, it's, it's him and his wife, the tremendous philanthropists, uh, Jefferson Hospital, and of course the Kimmel Center, which in itself architecturally is a fantastic uh, place. This is Walter Annenberg. Sorry, I couldn't get a bigger picture of him. Walter Annenberg was uh, also a developer and entrepreneur from Philadelphia. He became, was very friendly with uh, President uh, Reagan and Nancy. And he, uh, of course, is famous for the uh, Annenberg Center at the University of Pennsylvania, and there's also an Annenberg Center in Los Angeles. Albert Greenfield. Uh, interestingly enough, that uh, I wasn't aware that Solomon Guggenheim was from Philadelphia, and of course his major architectural contribution is the Guggenheim Museum in New York City. I'm sure you all recognize it's the Academy of Music. And again, there, there are a lot of people that uh, I could show, but it takes more. Of course, Leonard Bernstein's one of my favorites. 
but he was at Curtis Institute, and that's where he had his major training. And he, uh, one of his teachers was the Jewish conductor Fritz Reiner. And uh, occasionally, uh, I, I've seen him when he conducted the Curtis Institute Orchestra one year. Remarkable individual. He's a story all to his own. Eugene Normandy. And now we go to a different part of the music. This is South Philly. And these are, uh, of course, the top three of the Golden Boys. You know who they are. And on the right, the reason that it's really in here is Eddie Fisher. Eddie Fisher went to South Philadelphia High School. And I hope some of you know what his career was like including an unfortunate mismatch with uh, Elizabeth Taylor. This is Jane Golden. She's the founder of the Philadelphia Murals, which is still going on strong. And it was all her efforts to enlist uh, people doing graffiti to doing murals. And so sometimes, uh, we did it at Temple Emanuel, there's a mural tours that you can take uh, to different parts. They have five, six to take you to different parts of the city. Uh, if you're looking for a program, it's, uh, we, we had a fabulous time with them. This is one of the murals. It's deep in South Philly, and uh, Eddie Fisher's on there. And I also found out that Jerry Blavitt, I think his father's Italian and mother Jewish. And then the stars that come out of Philadelphia. Joey Bishop, who was part of the Rat Pack. So now I see people do recognize certain people. <laughs> And you get the th one of the three stooges. <laughs> and he, evidently he was a very good violinist. This is Norman Fell. Person on the left, uh, of course, the Prime Minister of Israel. And the person on the right is a graduate of South Philadelphia who became prominent and also was the founder of Brandeis University. This is the plaque in front of this is the present South Philadelphia High School. I went to it when it was still the, the building that was constructed in 1907. And this is the uh, Jewish chapel at uh, Brandeis University. This fellow's name Philip Brown, who uh, spent his time at the University of Pennsylvania and got a Nobel Prize for his work in understanding cholesterol and treating it. This person's name is Carl Lutz, It was sort of interesting when Commander Mellitz mentioned, also mentioned about, or there was mention about the, uh, sorry, not him, uh, the Holocaust series. He's not mentioned in it. He was the Swiss envoy that along with a number of others that you know, wrote, uh, gave visas, and helped many Jews to escape. He was stationed in Philadelphia for a while, so I figured, well, let's, let's put him in there. So now we come to sports. So we go back to, uh, oh, there you go. Why didn't we do that before? <laughs> Wait a minute, guys. I'm going to start all over again. <laughs> 
<laughs> it took him this long to figure it out. <laughs> He's one of your guys. I don't work we, that We don't clean it. <laughs> well, it's great, even now. <laughs> You're going to have to tell me how it works, so next time I give the presentation, I'll get somebody to do that. You'll anyway. Two, you'll need two thumbs. <laughs> The SWAS stand for actually South Philadelphia Hebrew Association. They played in the 20s and the 30s. Basketball was a very rough game at that time, especially the Boston Celtics were around, and I think they had more fights than they had uh, basketball going on. Harry Litwack is in the center. Center? Left? I'm sorry. On the left. That's Eddie Gottlieb on the left, who uh, those you know was instrumental in forming the eventually the NBA. Now, now I'm not. I can't move us forward. That's it. We're stuck with that. Is that he got leap? Okay, we'll have to go back and forth. Am I still okay on time? Who's my timekeeper? We all right? We good? We're toward the end. The sports is the last part. Uh, doesn't make any difference. I don't think the name uh, uh, Richmond makes any difference. He was one of the early involved with the 76ers. The photograph is because the guy in the middle, I don't know, do you want to play around? Anybody have an idea who it is? What's that? You got it, see? We could have done more of this. I have to go back down again. I can't move. Larry Zidell. Well, I'm not sort of up that. Are there any Jewish players in hockey at all? In the majors? Anyway, he, he was with the early Flyers. He was when they first started in 67. Uh, that was another one of, uh, I did some freelance work for the Flyers, which was a lot of fun, especially the group in the, around the 70s. This is sort of interesting. You can increase that and we'll go down again since we have the time. So I showed you in the beginning uh, of uh, Rabbi Cantor Satius that came down during the Revolutionary War uh, to escape the British. This is vexatious. Now, by this time, the family is no longer Jewish. But uh, in the 50s, he was one of the great tennis players and uh, won quite a number of uh, major titles. I right, guess to get to the next slide, you have to go down again. So the remember when, now, this is an interesting segue of why I put this in. One, because I remember it, because I was at the, uh, the Stanley Cup final game and always was a fan of Kate Smith. But the connection is the song. And the song was God Bless America by Irving Berlin. So the Flyers had this amazing record that they started playing God Bless America instead of the National Anthem. And the Flyers had, in the later period, I remember the number, that they had like 50 wins and two losses. Now they did play for that final game and Kate Smith came. Now, I know there's controversy about her uh, beliefs and everything, but uh, sometimes you may want to have a discussion about uh, art and the artist. How do you handle that? But I'm more for, to tell you, I'm for the artist. I'm a fan of Wagner also, but uh, that was one glorious night. Philadelphia had the, a 
for no, quite a number of years, it's, I think it's still in its existence, but not like it used to be, which was the Jewish Basketball League. And you really had all the top players. This is Harry Litwack. This was when, uh, this was actually the 50th anniversary of the teams that went to the NCAA, double, NCAA uh, Final Four in, in the late 50s and to the NIT. Uh, for Temple fans, uh, lower right, the PR person there who was there forever with his briefcase at every game, named Al Schreier. I don't know if that name is familiar to anybody. Evidently not. Uh, I don't know, you want to go back and forth? We're, we're toward the end anyway. Of course, it's Larry Brown, who was coach. Let's go to the next slide. And we have Ruben. Somebody told me, I can't remember. Does somebody know who's the guy in the middle? It's not Crab. No. No. Anyway, you can just make it a little bit less. I know he's not Jewish, but a great basketball player. And you know the smile. So, for those that don't know it, that's Magic Johnson. But Al, uh, Ruben was one of the owners of the 76ers, and evidently quite a entrepreneur, and still is in Philadelphia. Somebody want to get it? No. Merrill Reese, right. This surprised me that Reuben O'Mara was of the Jewish faith. Our former coach, manager. Can you make that one larger? And this is Josh Harris of the 76ers. Down to the next. Uh, this person, I, I, I don't know. Anybody know who this is? What this brings me into is the, you're aware that there's a, in Philadelphia, a Jewish Hall of Fame. It wasn't the Y, but uh, they had a flood and now they're in limbo looking for a place. So there are a tremendous number of people that are in that, uh, Jewish athletes, uh, some from Philadelphia, some not. This is Bob Spivak, who happens to be, uh, was a uh, resident of uh, Cherry Hill. But the reason I put him up there, tragically he passed away in the last month or so. He was the driving force in the head of the U.S. sports for the Maccabi games. So uh, Alan Brenner's here that his daughters who competed for the youth Maccabi owe everything to Bob Spivak. Uh, he was also the one that decided on the youth Maccabi. Uh, as you know, it was held here a few years ago. The, the regional, and I had a granddaughter who was a who's a good swimmer that competed in the... Anyway, Bob Spivak. This sort of goes... Uh, now we're really at the end. This is now all the Eagles. Eagle owners. So Jerry Wallman. Need to go back. Leonard Tose. Sort of, this was at a Philadelphia sports writer dinner where it was being honored. And of course, Larry. And the championship. And Roseman is there somewhere. And that's it, gentlemen.
So I understand that uh, we have some time for questions and answers, if there are any. Anybody want to make any comments? Very well done. Very interesting. Yes, sir. David. Uh, did you uh, <laughs> Say, I'm sorry, can you, you know why guys, stand up when you want to say something so everybody can hear you real good. I'm Dick Knopf, for those who don't know. Uh, Frank Gary, the architect over at the museum, did you get to meet him by any No. The question was, uh, did I get over to uh, any of the meetings or any of the uh, programs that they had regarding Frank Gary? and unfortunately, no. Anybody else? Yes, sir. I have a question as a photographer. When did you switch over from film to digital? Relatively early. I, I just felt that this is what was going to be. And the whole concept, uh, this was the future. So it's probably... Uh, <laughs> I don't know what year it goes back to. I had an early Nikon, I now use all Canon. But uh, the whole idea of what you can do and the programs that are out there and how you can put together uh, a presentation such as this, takes, takes work to do it. Uh, sometimes the, uh, the programs, from my point of view, but that's a different discussion, aren't as good as they can be, but uh, Hopefully they'll get better. Yes, sir. What about the future for you? What do you see uh, as your future uh, involvement in this? The future of? With you. What oh. kind of future involvement do you see as far as continuing this? Well, uh, basically what, what I still have, which I could still work on, uh, I've done Jewish experience in like France, I've done it in Portugal. I've done it uh, Amsterdam, Berlin, Vienna. Uh, so I, I do these presentations. Before COVID, I was in Florida. I was doing it to Jewish groups down there. And they would pick, and sometimes if they had me back, they, I would pick a different uh, country. Uh, Portugal is one of my favorites. But uh, so I. I Still have a lot of stuff to work on and uh, I don't know, to edit. And so uh, as I said to somebody, I, I found uh, somebody that I can work to emulate. Uh, and uh, I'm blanking on a name, but I'll come to it. Uh, Norman Lear. <laughs> I watched him at 100. So. Uh, my wish, especially since it's the new year, uh, that's something to go for. I want to leave you with one interest, one story. Uh, so for a long time, a number of us from South Philadelphia High School, my class, would get together and we would usually meet uh, in South Philly at one of the Italian restaurants. And there were more non-Jews than Jews, but we always got along famously. Great camaraderie. And the Italians would always toast. You always had wine, of course. And you would toast, and they would toast centani. So for you non-Italians, that's to 100 years. So I would say, listen, you guys are shortchanging yourself. <laughs> In Hebrew, we have this 100 and Swansik. <laughs> Anybody else? Is any of your stuff on YouTube? No. 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 I haven't. No, your presentation. I haven't gone, I haven't gone to that. Yes, sir. Have you ever done a segment on uh, Jewish performers, artists like Bette Midler, uh, promoters like Larry Mackin, who brought, yeah. who brought hunger to it? I'll tell you, the, re the reason I haven't done it, because mostly when I do it, I wanted to have a lot of my own photographs. And I've 
have some photographs of entertainers, but not enough for a presentation. I can throw it into something like this, but even this, you know, this, uh, uh, I didn't have anybody that, uh, that fit here. I mean, I have some, uh, like Theodore Piquel, uh, I have him on a number of occasions, and, and there are some others, but not enough for a full presentation. Yeah, the only ones like Jan Pierce, <laughs> No, I don't go. I wasn't that uh, forward to get that kind of stuff. It was later years that uh, I used to push myself into uh, areas. There was somebody in the back there. Saw a thought. Saw a hand. Bernie. Hey. I'm sorry, say that I... I, I was with, with the 101st. Actually, I think the 82nd was earlier. Um, but I was not... Uh, let, let me put it this way. <laughs> My role with the 101st is that I was the post-pediatric dentist for two years. So uh, I, I didn't have to jump, uh, but, but you do know that uh, when you were, you were part of Medical Service Corps and the procedure was that after the paratroop regiments had made their jumps and secured the area, we had to come in next. So uh, I, I even, to this day, tried to claim that when I got my injections for Southeast Asia, I was sick for two days, and I've been trying to get qualified for the Purple Heart, and it hasn't worked. <laughs> I'm, so I'm having a little trouble here. But. Let me talk to you about it, okay? Yes, sir. A little bit of a technical question. How many shots do you take before you decide if you've got enough to pick from for your pictures? I take as many as I possibly can in the time that I have. And then it's a problem of getting, of editing and getting rid of them. I'm in the still process of trying to get rid of stuff that is no longer relevant. But, uh, my, my uh, philosophy was photograph, I hate the word shoot. I always said, you know, how come we're such a profession that's so violent? We, uh, we shoot people, okay, that, they use that term. And then when, you, when those people that develop their own stuff, they would blow up a picture, you know? I, I have my person yanking me. No, I'm not yanking you. There are two more, two more bits of business for you. Oh. Thank you very much, of course. So I'd like to present you, you with a certificate and a one-year membership to the men's club. Okay. okay. I, you'd be more than welcome to. Can we get a quick picture? Thank you. You got a couple there? And... I need you to pull the 50-50 winner. Oh, what happens if I pull my own? Hey, then you win. <laughs> okay. Okay, so the number is 185076. Anybody? David. The two Davids. My, my coupons are sitting. What are the numbers there? Oh, you got it? 076? That's me. Okay. Wonderful. Okay, thank you so much. Okay. I always am concerned. Does it go well or? 
Yeah, yeah. here. Go. It was quiet, so Please. you know it went well. Okay, a couple of things. Yep. One, does anybody have any good and welfare that they'd like to bring to the attention of the club? Yeah. Birthdays, anniversaries, mitzvahs, anything we should know about? Do we have anybody who's looking for an appliance <laughs> provider? <laughs> yes. I had a request earlier to, to, to solicit somebody who could possibly do a hookup for a new Sub-Zero fridge. Does anybody have a connection? Yeah, ABC. Yeah, yeah, well, does anybody have a personal connection? No, no pun intended. Okay, if, if not, no. No connections, very good. Everybody, uh, Happy New Year. You know, good yantif, and we will see you all in a month.